welcome to episode 138 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 22nd of October. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some cross stitch, a blast from the past, I have a gadget, I have some confessions to show you. <laughs> oh dear. I have some information on my shop update. So you can find me on social medias as Craft Ice Magic and I'll put links to those down below in the description box. And I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where I sell my hand dyed yarns, handmade project bags, stitch markers, um, higher higher knitting needles and bag making supplies like fabrics and wadding etc. So we have two make-alongs going on in the Ravelry group and on Instagram at the moment. The first one is Craft Ice Magic Gift Along 2020 and you can use the hashtag CHM Gift Along 2020 on Instagram but also there's a discussion thread in the Ravelry group as well and it's basically making anything for a gift. It can be Christmas presents, it can be birthday presents for or for any other sort of festivity that you celebrate or just because you want to make somebody something lovely or it can be a gift for yourself. <laughs> so um, do come and join us over on the Ravelry group and using the hashtag on Instagram. But we've also got the Autumn Makes Craft Along, which I started last week. And that goes both in on Instagram using the hashtag Autumn Makes Craft Along, but also there's a Ravelry group as well. So it can be chat along about what you've been making. There's anything that's sort of related to autumn, whether it's autumnal colours or something very specific like Halloween themed, all that anything that you can make related to autumn time, um, do come and join us and if you're double dipping that's absolutely fine it can be a gift and autumnal themed at the same time as well <laughs> we have some lovely lovely prizes that have been gifted to the podcast first of all i have a lovely copy of the herb splatter socks by christine gladwin who's the sweet lavender knits podcast so do check her out if you're looking for another knitting podcast to follow she's a lovely lady all the way from canada and this pattern is absolutely gorgeous i'll pop a picture up here of what that sock pattern looks like and i will also show you my finished pair that i've got to show you in the beginning of the knitting section so that's the first prize the second of the prizes is a lovely skein of yarn from the lovely lorraine who's from lns craft and this is gorgeous yarn from woolly mama what have i done with the label here we go so it's a woolly mama yarn and it's called High Ho Silver and it's on a 75% merino, 25% nylon base and it's absolutely gorgeous, so lovely, bright and cheerful. Um, so that'll be one of the prizes. And thirdly, we've got a lovely sock tube from Ducky Darlings from Hayley. Excuse the little um, <laughs> the noise of the plastic, but I want to keep it nice and tidy in there for you. But this is a gorgeous sock tube that Hayley's gifted us. So I've also bought a Christmas yarn advent calendar from Hayley. So I will show you that in confessions. Obviously, I'm not going to open the little packets, but I want to show you the inside of the box. Um, so do watch out for that in a bit. Um, so this is the mustard colourway that Hayley's gifted us and it's a gorgeous autumnal themed yarn that she's dyed up and then cranked into this sock tube because she's got a sock knitting machine and she sells these little kits where you can have a sock tube and then the yarn to knit the heels and toes afterwards um, on her website isn't that lovely of her to gift us one so i have some tutorials on how to split a yarn tube uh, into socks and make um, heels and toes as well so i will leave links to those in the description bar down below um, and hopefully i'll be able to link the videos up in the corner as well um, but isn't that lovely so autumnal hopefully you can see the color okay through the plastic so that's the third of the prizes so we have so many prizes for the autumnal make-along that is going until the 15th of november so you still have plenty of time to join in there anything autumnal themed and it can be any craft so don't forget to use the hashtag on instagram and pop along to the ravelry group and see what everyone else has been making 
So let's get on with the knitting, shall we? I have my finished pair of herb splatter socks, which is the lovely pattern by Christine Gladwin, who's the Sweet Lavender Knits podcast. And this is the pattern that I was talking about that the lovely Christine's gifted us for the Autumn Makes Craft Along that we've got running. Isn't it gorgeous? So it's a top down sock. It's got some twisted rib at the top of the sock. It has some twisted rib detail on the back of the leg. It's got some interesting um, diagonal sort of lines with the slip stitches on the heel flap and gusset um, as well. It's a wedge toe and there's some gorgeous lace on the front of the foot, which you cannot see on the sock blocker properly. So I'm going to actually put my hand in it because it's much easier to see then. To be honest, this is the part of the sock that you'll see more when you're wearing it. Isn't that a gorgeous lacy pattern? Really, really pretty. And the yarn that I used for these are Yarn Tart yarns and that's Julie from Suffolk Socks own hand dyed company and it's some beautiful colours there. I'll just show you the back of the leg and then this bit here is probably where you can see um, the yarn colour the most. Um, isn't that pretty? Really pretty yarn, really pretty pattern and all ready to wear now. So the next thing I've been working on is my slip stravaganza shawl and this is a mystery knit along by Stephen West. I'm not going to show you the it just yet, I'm going to show you the yarns first. So if you do want to keep it a secret, um, I will put a timestamp on the screen and also a timestamp in the description bar that you can click on and it will get you straight past all the spoilers. <laughs> so I'm using these three yarns as my main colours. This one's a fondant fibre, this one is a blue faced yarns and this one is a low low did it yarn. I will leave links in the description bar um, to those companies. My main colour is a grey tonal yarn which is my own hand dyed yarn and this is an MCN base, the others are pretty much all MCN apart from the Lolo did it which has got tensile in it but it's got some bouncy sort of fluffy properties that are similar to cashmere which I think blends nicely with the others so they're all a similar sort of thickness and loftiness. And I've already used nearly a whole ball um, of the Living on a Prayer colourway which is my own hand dyed. Right, I'm now going to show you the shawl, so if you don't want any spoilers, skip along to that time. This is going to be a bit difficult to show you, I expect. <laughs> so this is how I've got on. This is the whole of Clue 2, part, no, Clue 2, section 3 um, of the shawl, and it's got these gorgeous diamond patterns with little stripes of all the colours. That, um, that you've got. I really like the look of that. So that goes all the way around the previous section. It's a little bit difficult to show you. I think once it's blocked, you'll be able to see those diamond details better. And that's how it's looking so far. So this part here was section one clue one and then there was an extra section which is here which was part two clue one as well because it was in the same week and i'm now eagerly awaiting clue three which i don't know how it's going to turn out it's going to be so interesting really pleased with the colors i've chosen and also i've used some of my stash which is always good <laughs> so that's how we're looking so far and the clue comes out Friday, so I'm really pleased that I'm all ready to go for the next clue. Because I think that normally with the clues, there's normally quite a lot of knitting to do. And because I only knit in the evenings, um, you need to. I need to make sure that I'm right on top of that. Especially because I want to show you on the podcast on a Thursday each week to show you how I'm getting on. So that is coming along really nicely and I'm, I really enjoy the mystery knit alongs that Stephen does just because they're always so interesting, lots of lovely different shapes in there. So now I've got my cross stitch to show you. So I don't feel as if I've got quite as much cross stitch done this week as normal because I ended up having to unpick some, <laughs> which wasn't fun, but it's, but there you go. <laughs> so. I will go a bit closer to the bit that I have been working on. So it is this pomegranate section here. Yes, it is a pomegranate and not an apple. 
<laughs> a lot of people pointed that out to me. Apparently it's a symbol of fertility and a number of other things, that, um, which is quite interesting, I thought. So I've been doing these bits either side of the pomegranate and then I filled in a little section at the top there. I think I filled in the inside of it as well, so I'd only literally just done the outside of the pomegranate, I think. Um, but that's coming along quite nicely, even though I had to rip back, but never mind. But I'm so close to getting that border. I've only got one border to do once I've done this bottom bit. Although, to be honest, because that's taken me a whole week to do that little bit at the bottom. Um, it's going to be a couple of weeks away before I start that outside border. So it is a Moira Blackburn pattern and this is what it's supposed to look like. And you can see that I'm on this bit down here. Um, I have put a link in the description bar to where you can get the pattern from because it's now being reprinted which is interesting. I am using an 18 count Ada which came with the kit um, which I had but obviously because it's an old kit obviously they don't they haven't re reproduced the material exactly so it might be slightly different but it's an 18 count Ada that I am using and it's got like a mottled effect to it. Um, which I think gives a nice texture. So that's my cross stitch for this week. I have been using my magnifying visor, but I do feel that I need to use it for another week before I can make a nice comparison to my old one so that I have a detailed sort of review rather than, um, I haven't tested the elastic bit for instance. So I'll talk about that next week. So now I have my blast from the past section and I have a t-shirt to show you because I feel like I haven't had any new dressmaking on the podcast for a little while so I thought I'd pop in some dressmaking and then hopefully at the weekend I'll have time to um, catch up with my dressmaking plans that I've got. So this is the Cashmereette pattern Concord t-shirt and it's the short sleeve version with the high neck that I chose to make. There is various different, there's sort of a three quarter length sleeve um, and like a v-neck, a lower round neck and a high neck and this is the highest version. I made this, oh, must have been a couple of months ago and it's made of a Lady McElroy Cobra Corsage print and it's in the crepe jersey material. Now I've had quite a lot of different Lady McElroy fabrics and to be honest they're normally really really lovely quality but I feel like this crepe jersey wears quite quickly. So if I come up to the camera um, and show you, you can see there's a lot of bobbling occur in there and I think because the background is black it's showing up quite a lot. So I feel like I don't really want to wear this t-shirt out of the house now uh, because it's got quite a lot of wear on it and I wouldn't say that I've worn it a very lot but I have been wearing... Um, a pinny over the top when I'm doing my dyeing so I suppose it's it's had more chance to rub onto the front of my garment but I was just a little bit disappointed with the durability of this type of fabric um, I think if I wasn't wearing it with a pinny or something it would have probably been all right to be honest because if you look at the rest of the garment um, it's not pilled elsewhere it has pilled underneath the armpits um, obviously where that's rubbing there um, but it's not something I'd make a sort of t-shirt out of, perhaps a dress or something that will be worn a little bit less often. Um, but I just wanted to show you my observation. Has anybody else had this experience with the crepe jersey Lady McElroy materials? A lot of the Lady McElroys I've bought before have been sort of a, a woven viscose and they've been relatively durable. But um, this one, I don't think... Maybe it's not particularly appropriate for a t-shirt where it gets a lot of wear during the day. But there we go. I haven't got Barbara to wear it today because I wanted to show you close up to the camera. But it's basically just a plain t-shirt. But yeah, a bit disappointed with, with how it's sort of bobbled a bit at the front. So now it's time for my gadget section. Now, this is another <laughs> gadget. It's very a loose term gadget. It's not actually a proper gadget, but... It can be in my gadget section, I've decided. <laughs> so I have been using this bulldog clip to actually hold my cross stitch pattern 
on my Lowry frame that I've got to hold my cross stitch. Now it's a metal stand frame and it's got a screw that clamps in my plastic frame that I put inside it. It's a bit like a Q-snap but it's a cheaper version one and that goes inside the frame and then there's a bit of metal that sort of goes around the outside of that and I can clip um, my cross stitch pattern which I find much more useful than having one of those big magnetic boards above my cross stitch because it's quite big and cumbersome so I've been finding this really really useful. So here's the clip in action. I obviously haven't got the um, pattern here because it's sort of a paid for pattern but you can see how I've got it to work and there's my cross stitch ready to start my next 20 minutes tomorrow morning. And to be honest I've been grabbing um, these clips that I've bought for quite a lot of things as well so sometimes if I'm sketching in my um, little sketchbook I'll use this to hold the pages open and things but to be honest I don't think you can ever have too much lovely stationery. <laughs> so they came in a set with three different size clips but I do tend to use this extra large one the most but I will leave a link to the eBay shop that I picked them up from but I just think they look gorgeous as well so anybody who loves stationery they'd be a great Christmas gift <laughs> so that's my little gadget for this week and now I have my confession section oh dear <laughs> So, first of all, I'm going to show you this lovely needle minder that the lovely Lorraine from LNS Craft sent. And she has got a lovely, lovely podcast. So, do go and catch up with her podcast as well. She does a lot of knitting. She's very, very productive and she does a lot of cross stitch as well now. And she sent me this gorgeous, gorgeous needle minder, which I'm so excited to use on a Christmas needlework project so I'm gonna have to start one quickly. <laughs> Thank you so much Lorraine. So do check her out she's LNS Crafts on YouTube and I will leave links um, to her channel and also her Instagram page in the description bar down below. So I have my I did an order for Chapel View Crafts because of course you can never have too many needle miters. <laughs> So I'd got my eye on this one here, which is a Battenberg um, needle minder. So these, oh, I should have explained actually on the one that Lorraine had uh, got me. They're basically a beautiful piece of sort of artwork, which has got a magnetic back. And you can put these two sections either side of some fabric and it's held by a magnet. And then you can pop your needle on there to keep it from being lost, basically. So I've bought the Battenberg version and also this lovely Christmas little cottage thing which actually this little Christmas one is so much prettier in real life than it looked like in the pictures um, and the Battenberg is just like it says in the picture so I'm really pleased with those and of course I had to get some progress keepers because I was putting an order in <laughs> I have a Bakewell tart which I think is gorgeous isn't that lovely an ice bun, isn't that cute? I have a jam sponge, isn't that? Oh, I could eat that right now. <laughs> and last but not least, I have a roulade, isn't that gorgeous? So I'm all set for stitch markers. I can never have too many of Cheryl stitch markers and needle minders, they're absolutely gorgeous. So I've treated myself to those. So this is Cheryl's card. She now has a website, chapelviewcrafts.co.uk and there's some contact details on there. But even the card is tasty enough to eat. <laughs> So that's my first purchase, but I also, I was telling you earlier that I bought an advent calendar from Hayley from Ducky Darlings. Now if you don't want to see inside the box here, I'm not going to open any of the yarns of course, but I just thought I'd show you how lovely she'd packaged it. So she's put a card in there, um, showing what the theme is for this year, and it is pantomime. So isn't that lovely? And on the back... I'm not going to show you the list actually because they're the themes of each of the days. There's a name for all of the colourways for the 24 days of the advent. And then there's some gorgeous um, cellophane and tissue paper, which I think is rather lovely. 
you can't see the little gold swirls on the screen very well but they're lovely and inside it's packaged absolutely beautifully 24 little packets ready to open for christmas aren't they lovely and i know how much work it is to put together advent calendars so i'm very appreciative thank you so much Haley. and i cannot wait to open them at the beginning of advent and i will be doing vlogmas this year so you get to see um, me opening one each day as well so that's my advent for this year oh and Haley says she does have a couple of advents left if you do want to purchase some um so i will leave links to her website in the description bar down below and if you're after an advent um you can pop over to her shop and pick one up i haven't got any of my advents left i'm afraid in case anybody asks as well um i don't i think that most people normally list them quite early because they take quite a lot of time to make up and prepare so last of all is my shop update information so i haven't got anything new to show you this week but i do have a couple of sort of announcements so first of all i've run out of my bfl base until next week i haven't taken the listings off my website because it's only next week anyway so just beware if you put an order in for bfl there'll be a bit of a wait on your order i will send an email to anybody who orders bfl um before that time as well so um but it, it's only next week so hopefully it'll come in sort of Wednesday and I can get it dyed up and posted out to you before the end of the week. Next week I'm planning on doing quite a big Christmas shop update so there are three or four different project bags um, and fabrics that I will have in my shop for you to purchase that are all sort of Christmas themed so I'm excited to get those in the shop and I will also be putting crochet hooks in the shop as well i'm so excited they are my favorite type of crochet hook they will be the clover and more and they will be from i think it's two millimeters to five millimeter crochet hooks i will next week i will talk about exactly what will be going in the shop but i'm so excited then i will have my favorite needles and my favorite crochet hooks in the shop so I'm so excited to get all those in the shop. So that will be the 30th of October at 7pm GMT that the, the crochet hooks and all my new Christmas bags will be in. But I will talk about the new stock that will be going in the shop on next Thursday's podcast so you have time to sort of have a look before it goes live so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and i shall see you in next week's podcast bye